हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू एजुकेटर्स प्लस सो आज की वीडियो में हम लोग डिस्कस करेंगे अबाउट द इन्वायरमेंट प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट सो बेसिकली इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ योर एन टी एन एच जी आर एफ पेपर फर्स्ट यूनिट नाइन दैट इज पीपल डेवलपमेंट एंड एनवायरमेंट एनवायरमेंट यूनिट के ज्यादातर टॉपिक्स हमने अपनी प्रीवियस वीडियोज में डिस्कस कर लिए हैं सो इफ यू वॉन्ट आप जाके उन वीडियोज को चेकआउट कर सकते हैं हमारे यूट्यूब चैनल पर सो नाउ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग विद द सेशन आई वुड लाइक टू इन्फॉर्म यू दैट एजुकेटर्स प्लस की गूगल प्ले पे ऐप अवेलेबल है सो इफ यू वॉन्ट आप जाके आपको डाउनलोड कर सकते हैं वहाँ आपको पेड कोर्सेस मिलेंगे जिसमें वीडियोज एंड लाइव सेशन हैं ई बुक्स अवेलेबल हैं सारे टॉपिक्स के ऊपर बोथ इन हिंदी एंड इंग्लिश मीडियम मॉक टेस्ट सीरीज अवेलेबल है सी बी टी मोड के ऊपर सेम एन टी एर एप्ले का पैटर्न पे कम्प्लीट स्टडी मटेरियल को प्रोवाइड किया जा रहा है बेस्ड ऑन न्यू पैटर्न लाइव इंटरक्टिव सेशन है डाउट क्लियर करने के लिए and for more details you can always check the description box of the video so now let's start with the topic that is environment protection act so basically jo environment protection act hai epa wo enact kiya gaya tha 1986 mein iska kya objective ka iska main objective ye tha ki ye provide karega protection aur ye improve karega conditions for the environment of the country now basically it empowers the central government ki wo central government establish kar sake aise authorities ko aur unko charge kar sake with the mandate of preventing environmental pollution in all its forms aur tackle kar sake specific environmental problems ko that are peculiar to different parts of the country now ye jo act hai ye one of the most comprehensive legislation hai uh, with a pretext to protection and improvement of the environment अगर इसके बैकग्राउंड की बात करें सो बेसिकली जो रूट्स है ऑफ द इनाकमेंट ऑफ द एनवायरमेंट प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट वो लाई करती है इन द यूनाइटेड नेशन कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन द ह्यूमन एनवायरमेंट जो स्टॉकहोम में हेल्ड हुई थी इन जून 1972, जिसे हम लोग स्टॉकहोम कॉन्फ्रेंस के नाम से भी जानते हैं न इन दिस इंडिया पार्टिसिपेटेड एंड इट यू नो हेल्थ दैट इट विल टेक अप्रोप्रिएट स्टेप्स फॉर द इम्प्रूवमेंट ऑफ द ह्यूमन एनवायरमेंट नाउ द एक्ट इम्प्लीमेंट्स द डिसीजन दैट आर मेड एट द स्टॉक कॉन्फ्रेंस न फर्दर अगर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल प्रोविजन की बात करें सो जो इन्वायरमेंट प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट है उसको इनैक्ट किया गया है अंडर आर्टिकल टू फिफ्टी थ्री ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अकॉर्डिंग टू विट अकॉर्डिंगली विच प्रोवाइड्स फॉर द इनाकमेंट ऑफ लेजिस्लेशन फॉर गिविंग इफेक्ट टू द इंटरनेशनल अग्रीमेंट्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट आर्टिकल फोर्टी एट ए ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया स्पेसिफाइज दैट द स्टेट शैल इंडीवर टू प्रोटेक्ट and improve the environment and to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country apart from that article 51a further provides that every citizen shall protect the environment so now let's discuss about the aims and objectives of the uh, environment protection act so pehla uh, aim and objective hai that it will be implementing the decisions that may, that were made at the un conference on human environment that held in stockholm Apart from that, creation of a government authority to regulate industry that can issue direct orders, including closure orders. Apart from that, coordinating, apart from that, coordinating activities of different agencies that are operating under the existing laws. Further, another aim and objective was enacting regular laws for the protection of the environment. Apart from that, it will also be imposing punishments and penalties on those who endanger the environment, safety, and health. For each failure of contravention, the punishment includes a prison term of up to five years and, or maybe, a fine up to rupees one lakh or both. Now, this can be extended for up to seven years in cases. Apart from that, engaging in the sustainable development of the environment. and the next objective was attaining protection of the right to life under article 21 of the constitution so now let's discuss about the main provisions of the environment protection act so uh, firstly the environment protection act empowers the center ki wo sare measures ko le sake take all measures such as necessary uh, in the domain of the environment protection so under the law it can coordinate and execute nationwide programs and plans to further environmental protection apart from that it can uh, mandate environmental quality standards particularly those concerning the emission or we can say discharge of environment pollutants apart from that this law can imp- apart from that this law can impose restrictions on the location of industries and also the law gives the government the power of entry for examination testing of equipment and other purposes and power to analyze the sample of air water soil or any other substance from any place 
फर्दर द इन्वायरमेंट प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट एक्सप्लिसिटली बार्स द डिस्चार्ज ऑफ इन्वायरमेंटल पोल्यूटेंट्स इन एक्सेस ऑफ प्रिस्क्राइब रेगुलेटरी स्टैंडर्ड्स फर्दर देयर इज ऑल्सो इन प्लेस अ स्पेसिफिक प्रोविजन फॉर हैंडलिंग हजारडियस सब्सटांसिस विच इज प्रोहिबिटेड अन दिस इन कम्प्लाइंस विद रेगुलेटरी रिक्वायरमेंट्स फर्दर द एक्ट ऑल्सो इम्पावर्स एनी पर्सन अपार्ट फ्रॉम द ऑथोराइज गवर्नमेंट ऑफिसर्स सो दैट दे कैन फाइल अ कंप्लेन इन अ कोर्ट रिगार्डिंग एनी कॉन्ट्रवेंशन ऑफ द प्रोविजन ऑफ द एक्ट सो दीज वर्स मेन प्रोविजन ऑफ द एनवायरमेंट प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट इफ यू वॉन्ट वी कैन डिस्कस इट इन डिटेल सो बेसिकली अगर हम एक्ट के साइलेंट फीचर्स की बात करें तो पहला तो यह है कि इट प्रोवाइड्स पावर्स ऑफ द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट सो जो सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट है दैट शैल हैव द पावर टू टेक ऑल सच मेजर्स एज इट डीम्स नेसेसरी Uh, for the purpose of protecting and improving the quality of the environment in coordination with the state governments right then the next is that it uh, you know provides restriction on pollutant discharge so koi bhi individual ya fir organization uh, you know will not uh, discharge emit or permit to discharge emit any environment pollutant in excess uh, of the prescribed standards uh, further the next is compliance with procedural safeguards so koi bhi individual uh, is uh, not allowed or uh, shall not handle or shall be caused to handle any hazardous substance except in accordance with the procedures without complying with the safeguards as prescribed then the next is powers of entry and inspection so any person empowered by the central government have the right to enter with assistance deemed necessary at any place for the inspection of compliance of any orders notification and directions that are given under the environment protection act then the next is uh, establishment of environmental uh, laboratories so the central government as per the act is entitled to establish environmental laboratories and uh, basically what will happen that it will recognize any laboratory or institute as environmental laboratories to carry out the function entrusted to such a laboratory then uh, another is that uh, appointment of government analyst so a government analyst will be appointed by the central government for the analyzing the samples of air water soil or other substances that are sent to a recognized environmental laboratory now basically uh, is act ke thode drawbacks bhi hain so pehla drawback ye hai that there is a complete centralization of the act so basically a potential drawback of the act could be its centralization while such wide powers are provided to the center and no powers is given to the state governments so the former is liable to its uh, you know arbitrariness and uh, misuse then the next is no public participation so the act also says uh, nothing about public participation as regards environmental protection and basically there is a need to involve the citizens in environment protection to check the arbitrariness and raise awareness and empathy towards the environment then the next drawback is that there is incomplete coverage of pollutants so the act does not address modern concept of pollution such as noise overburden transport system and radiation waves which are also an important cause for deteriorating environment now let's also discuss some international conventions for environment protection to which india is a signatory so the first is the montreal protocol to the vienna convention on substances that deplete ozone layer which was held in the year 1987 then another is the basel convention on transboundary movement of hazardous waste that took place in the year 1989 then also india is a signatory to rotterdam convention that held in 1998 another signatory of india uh, another uh, then another convention is the stockholm convention on persistent organic pollutants uh, further india is also a signatory to the united nations framework convention on climate change that took place in the year 1992 india is also a signatory to the convention on biological diversity in the year 1992 and also a signatory to the united nation conference to combat desertification that took place in the year 1994 so yes this was all for today's video i hope you find this video helpful and relevant then please do subscribe to our channel like share and comment and stay tuned for the more upcoming videos thank you